In this video, we're going to assess the olfactory nerve, commonly referred to as cranial nerve 1. There are two main sections to this video. First of all, I'll demonstrate a clinical examination of the cranial nerve 1, and then secondly, I'll explain the clinical significance of any abnormalities in this test. Remember, if you enjoy this video, hit the like and subscribe button. To assess the sense of smell, you should carry some vials of non-irritating substances, such as coffee, lemon, or vanilla. These odors stimulate the olfactory receptors. Hello, my name is Dr. Donovan, and I'd like to assess your sense of smell today. Is that okay? Yes. So to do this, I'm going to ask you to occlude one of your nostrils with your index finger. This means blocking it with your index finger. I'd then like you to close your eyes and start sniffing through the nostril that isn't blocked. I'm going to hold something in front of your nose and I'd like you to tell me if you smell it and if so, what you smell. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so if you'd like to start by occluding one of your nostrils for me. And if you'd like to start sniffing. I can smell coffee. We're going to repeat that, but for the opposite nostril. So if you'd like to occlude your opposite nostril with your index finger, close your eyes and start sniffing. I smell lemon. Okay, you can open your eyes. That's everything and that concludes the test. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Remember, it's important not to move excessively when placing the odour in front of the patient's nostril as this might give away a clue that the odour is being presented. Try do it as smoothly as possible. Smell can be determined to be intact when the patient correctly detects the odour placed in front of them. In this case, the patient correctly detected coffee and lemon. Therefore, we can determine that the sense of smell is intact. So if the patient doesn't detect an odour or there's an abnormality, there are some technical words which could describe this, and we'll briefly discuss four important clinical alterations in the sense of smell here. First of all, there's hyperosmia. This is increased olfactory acuity. This can occur in diseases such as Addison's disease, but it's almost certainly impossible to detect through simple bedside testing. Secondly, there is hypoosmia, and this is diminished olfactory acuity. This can usually occur due to local processes involving both the nasal and olfactory mucosa. For example, it could be caused by rhinitis, secondary to con common cold, or it could be caused by nasal polyps or carcinoma. The third type is anosmia. This is the inability to recognise odours, and it might be unilateral or bilateral. The patient can usually recognise bilateral anosmia, but unilateral anosmia is usually not perceived. Common causes of anosmia include head trauma in the occipital area, tumours of the floor of the anterior fossa, subarachnoid haemorrhages, or even infectious causes, more recently such as COVID-19. The final one I'd like to talk about very briefly is dysosmia. This is an abnormal sense of smell. Pathologic changes in the olfactory system may be amongst the earliest changes in diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. And olfactory hallucinations, usually of unpleasant odours such as burned rubber, can occur in epilepsy, withdrawal states and certain psychiatric conditions. The amygdala, which is a structure deep in the brain's medial temporal lobe, might be the source of some of these hallucinations. A valuable clinical corollary is to ask the patient about change in taste. For example, pernicious anemia could be an important differential diagnosis in an elderly patient with olfactory disturbance who complains that he or she can no longer enjoy eating because food does not taste the same. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe, and if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.